let's continue talking about another uh, important function of the cell, and that's the fact that it makes its own proteins. Now, as we mentioned earlier, and hopefully you've previewed the protein synthesis transcription translation videos that I've posted, but as we mentioned earlier, one of the things that cells do is they express genes, and genes are segments of DNA, which the most of the DNA is found in the nucleus. Here we see a nucleus, and we need to understand that it actually has a double membrane that surrounds it and separates the contents of the nucleus, called nucleoplasm, from the contents of the rest of the cell, which would be cytoplasm. But of course, we need a method to allow things to go inside and outside of the nucleus because we actually have to go in and unlock the genes that's in the chromosomes, which are now in the form of chromatin. And then we have to be able to take the instructions of the genes out to the ribosomes that are in the cytoplasm. So understanding the structure of the nucleus is important in helping us understand this. Here again, we see a representation of a cell and the nucleus of a cell. And then here's something that you're probably somewhat familiar with. At least you've heard the term chromosomes before. But what I want you to realize is what are chromosomes? Well, it's actually wound up DNA. It's wound up from the form of DNA that's actually unwound and non-dividing cells. This unwound version of DNA is actually called chroma, chromatin. So we actually have to wind it up whenever we're going to make our chromosomes. We will come back to this a little bit later when we talk about cell division. But right now, let's talk about what's actually going on, what is, what is in the DNA that uh, has to do with, with uh, protein synthesis. And of course, that means that segments of DNA that's called genes. Okay, when we talk about protein synthesis, it's divided up into two large steps. Transcription, which notice transcription takes place inside of my double membraned nucleus where my DNA is. And then translation, the second step in protein synthesis, which occurs basically at a ribosome in the cytoplasm. So transcription inside of the nucleus, translation outside of the nucleus, but in the cytoplasm occurring at a ribosome because we have to build the protein the polypeptide, which will usually become a protein, at a ribosome. Now notice from this picture, which by the way, you will need to know this picture, so make sure you become very familiar with it, but notice what's going on during transcription. During transcription, we are opening up the DNA at a specific place called a gene. We are reading that DNA, and we are forming a messenger RNA molecule from reading the DNA. Now, we'll look more specifically at how that occurs in a few minutes, but, but let's just understand the big picture right now. So we're reading the DNA. We are forming a message from reading the DNA, and that message is called messenger RNA. We process it, and then once we process it, the message literally leaves the nucleus through a hole called the nuclear pore, and then it enters into the cytoplasm, and it actually enters into what's called a small ribosomal subunit with one of its codons, which is a group of three base sequences of the nitrogenous bases. Notice here we have the word codon and it's, it's underlying three base sequences. So each of these three base sequences are codons. We will continue to talk about those and how those were formed. But the messenger RNA is made up of these three base sequences called codons. They go to a small subunit and uh, what they do is they code for amino acids. Now, how do the amino acids get to the ribosome and actually themselves, how are they put together? Uh, well, they, they are actually transferred to the ribosome with our next type of RNA called transfer RNA. So I've got messenger RNA bring the message to a ribosome. I've got transfer RNA literally picking up amino acids and transferring them to the ribosome because remember what proteins are they're sequences of amino acids that are in very specific order uh, because that's what gives them their characteristics and their shape okay now notice that the 
transfer RNA, which is also RNA, also has three base sequences. But of course, the sequences on both the transfer RNA and the messenger RNA are going to be the RNA nucleotide sequences. So that's why we will never see thymine here. We'll only see uracil. So we do see guanine. We do see cytosine. We do see adenine. But instead of thymine, we will have uracil. Now notice that that these bases are complementary to each other. Adenine only pairs with uracil. Cytosine only pairs with guanine. Cytosine only pairs with guanine. Here, adenine is only with uracil. Adenine only with uracil. Adenine only with uracil. So that means then I know this anticodon, in order to hook up the next amino acid, it would have to match with a codon. And let's say that codon was right here. Then we know that it would match with U only matches with adenine. Your cell only matches with adenine. Your cell only matches with adenine. So it would basically be the same codon here if we want this particular, which by the way happens to be phenylalanine, this particular amino acid to hook up to here. All right, so, so our original information is found in the DNA. We take that information to the ribosome. Now we can match each amino acid to the correct order that was given to us on the messenger RNA because the messenger RNA got it from reading it actually on the from the DNA. All right, so what ends up happening is we end up, uh, whatever the transfer RNA is, brings it to the to the uh, ribosome, and then we form a covalent bond, which is called a peptide bond, between our amino acids. Then whatever just delivered the amino acid then is free to go pick up the exact same amino acid that it delivered. So as we'll see, uh, so for instance, UGG here is bringing three renine. So I know that that UGG delivered three renine earlier because it was released after it delivered it. I know UUU delivered phenylalanine, so I know this UUU can only bring phenylalanine. It can't bring anything else. Okay, so we'll again look at some of the details of how to determine which amino acids are brought there. But again, our, our translation, we are translating the information brought by the messenger RNA by the transfer RNA because our anticodons have to be complementary to our codons. And if they are, then we'll have an enzymatic reaction where we will put these things together. Remember, enzymes always help us put things together or break things apart or rearrange things as long as there's energy also present in that process. So once we get our final amino acid hooked together, there's actually something called a stop co codon, which tells us to go ahead and cut away the, uh, the developing polypeptide uh, from the ribosome. So now that polypeptide is free to be used to make something. So very quickly, what do we have here? We have transcription happening in the nucleus where we are transcribing messenger RNA by reading the DNA. It then leaves, it goes to a ribosome where transfer RNA comes and reads it, it translates it, and as long as our, our, it, our anticodons match our codons in a complementary way, then we actually start uh, covalently bonding and forming these peptide bonds between my amino acids so we can form our developing polypeptide. Translation only happens in the cytoplasm at a ribosome. Transcription only happens in the nucleoplasm in the formation of messenger RNA from DNA. Now, what do you need to know from this picture? Well, you need to understand what's happening in the picture, but you would also need to be able to label the different parts, like know that's DNA, know that it's RNA that's being made and RNA that's leaving, know that RNA has three base sequences, on it, which are called codons. No, this is transfer RNA. Its job is to bring the amino acids to the ribosome and read the codon from the messenger RNA with its anticodon from the transfer RNA. And know that the translation is this out the second step and occurs in the cytoplasm. Transcription, of course, is the first step occurring in the nucleus. Now let's look at this first step which is, of course, occurring in the nucleus. And we can see from this picture that our gene is that segment of DNA. You can see here's our gene where we have our complementary bases, guanine always with cytosine, adenine always with thymine. Notice there's no uracil in here because 
your cell is actually part of an RNA nucleotide and DNA is only made up of DNA nucleotides. But when a cell signaler, when gene activation takes place and a cell signaler comes in and unzips the gene at the proper area, then an enzyme comes along, goes to our initiator control segment, which says basically uh, unwinds the DNA, breaks those hydrogen bonds, and says start reading in our first three codes here, which are called triplets. So notice, just like we said before, three base sequences for messenger RNA is called codons. Well, three base sequences on something called the template strand are called triplets. What's complementary to the template strand is the coding strand. So what's complementary to the triplets are the complementary triplets. So notice how thymine is always bonded to adenine, adenine is always bonded to thymine, cytosine is always bonded to guanine, and so forth. G, C, G, C, C, G. Okay, now, but of course what we've done is we've unwound this, and we're just going to read one side. Well, we're going to read the side that's called the template side. That's what a template is. It's the, it's the area that we would copy from. So what happens is the RNA polymerase actually starts reading this side. And what it does, because enzymes put stuff together, it attracts nucleotides to the bases. Well, what, what nucleotide is attracted to thymine? Well, it's adenine. So the next question is, does RNA have adenine? Well, it does. So here's our adenine that was attracted to that thymine. Now, the next question is, what is going to be attracted to adenine? Well, what does RNA have? Well, it doesn't have thymine, but it does have uracil. So we're going to attract uracil to the adenine. So you can see there's uracil right there attracted to the adenine. Next, what's attracted to cytosine? Well, does, does RNA have guanine? It does, so we're going to attract the guanine. So notice that here, my first, what's called my start codon, and by the way, this is always the start codon because it actually codes for an amino acid called methionine, but here's my, always my first start codon, AUG, was what I build from reading my triplet, which was TAC. Now, from, from then on out, it can vary quite a bit because there's so many different proteins that can be made. So the next amino acid could vary according to the gene and which protein I'm making. In this case, the next triplet is guanine. So what is, what is complementary to guanine? Well, cytosine is. So notice here's cytosine. What's complementary to the next guanine? Well, cytosine is. So next, what's complementary to cytosine? Well, here we can see something's being brought to cytosine. And if we say, well, what's always complementary to cytosine, we know it would be guanine. So notice here, when we're building our next codon, we had C, C, there's C, C, and we said guanine had to be the next one because it's the only thing complementary to cytosine. So there we see guanine, which was attracted to it. Look at this example of our, our three base sequences that make up different things. So in our coding strand, they're called triplets. Excuse me. In our template strand, they're called triplets. In our coding strand, they're actually called complementary triplets. In our messenger RNA that we're building, they're called codons. In our transfer RNA, which is bringing our amino acid, they're called anticodons. So notice how T, T, and T is complementary to A, A, and A. But our template strand is actually the strand we read. So look, here's our template strand. This is the strand we're reading. Our coding strand was, this, was the strand that actually held the information in it and was complementary to the triplet strand. Now what we did, we actually read the template strand to build our RNA, our messenger RNA. So we know U is complementary to A, U is complementary to A, U is complementary to A. And then when this was built and left the uh, nucleus, and went out to the ribosome, then we know our transfer RNA had to come read it. So we see here is that our transfer RNA, AAA, was complementary to UUU. Now what all these have in common is they all tell us to bring a phenylalanine and tells us that phenylalanine, whenever we see any of these signals, we know it's always going to be for phenylalanine. It will never be for any of the other 20 amino acids that we would have. Uh, actually, the very first one, I wish they would have put this first on the list, it's always used though, is methionine. Notice here, ATG was bonded to TAC in our DNA. 
The AUG was built 